Man, I tell ya, it feels like this new update to Resolve just keeps getting better and better. In the last video, we talked about all about this new update to Resolve 18.1. We went through some of the highlights, and specifically, I talked a lot about and demonstrated some of the really cool things happening in the Fusion page. I made it very clear in that video, I'm, I'm not, not an audio guy. guy. But since that time, I've gone back, watched through the official video from Blackmagic Design, and played a bit around myself, and I've gotta say, some of the audio stuff they're doing is really, really cool. So let's talk about it. So I am over here in the Fairlight page and we're gonna start by looking at a feature um, that will be so, so big for anyone doing like music first projects like uh, music videos or performance videos, but also just a really handy tool um, even to hop in and out of if you're doing a project that um, is strongly focused on your music track and you want to possibly edit to that, let's check it out. And that is a new option right here next to these timeline controls. It's this grid and I, if I click on that, you'll see, ooh, grid options. Uh, I can choose this to toggle the grid on and on and I can click here to toggle the grid on and off. If I zoom in, you can start to see, wow, we have all these lines here. Um, this is snapping for that as well, but you'll see uh, under this time scale, uh, if we do this uh, time code, then we can make each one of those lines one frame, half frame, quarter frame, or a second. But the interesting, very interesting option is this tempo option. I click that and now you see, oh, we have this like music based first options. And importantly, we have this tempo. If you know the tempo for your song, you can import, import it in here and match up the song start time code. And then if that's correct, uh, then each one of these lines will be a quarter note with these more visible lines being a whole bar uh, if it's in that time signature. But uh, you don't need to specifically know the tempo of a song. You can find it out or kind of have Resolve find it out for you. Check this out. I have this track here and uh, I am starting this track at zero. That'll come in handy. And if I start playing, we've got our song. So what I'm gonna do is listen through this and I'm gonna find, and I am going to click um, I at the start of a new bar and I'm gonna let that play through for two bars and then click O. So we'll do that. Got it. So now I have this, I can right click and go to set tempo grid BPM. It'll pull up this new thing, how many bars? Uh, I knew I was recording too, so I'll do that. Uh, click start from playhead. I'm gonna uncheck that um, since I uh, organized this so the song is starting at zero. I will set tempo from range. And then now if I clear out those in and out points, you can see we have these bars. They might be a little hard to see, they're down here. And you'll be able to see that each of these uh, dimmer bars will be one beat and uh, these uh, slightly more visible bars will be one measure. And it, it just like follows along so well. Da, 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 da. Ooh, and remember we had an option here for snapping. So snapping is on. So I have some sound effects over here. And if we want something to come on like perfectly on the beat, then we can just drag these to any of these thicker lines. <laughs> I didn't expect that to be uh, so much fun. <laughs> but you can see this can do so much work for you. Cutting to the beat could be a little interesting because this is like a fair light first feature, but you could always add markers specifically on the beat. And of course, this is a perfect example adding any extra sound effects like this right on the beat every time. It's pretty cool, but I can toggle that off just because it's it's a little busier in the timeline and we can move on to some really, really cool stuff. Um, but hey, I mean, that was cool. That was cool. But the next thing we're going to talk about, ooh, also really cool, and that is vector-based keyframes for automation. If you have no idea, uh, in the audio world, automation is this really cool process by which you can record uh, almost anything you can control in the software live. So for instance, I could jump later into this song and I have my fader over here. And actually, um, I am using this little MIDI controller I have. I've done a video all about this. It's a little dusty, but this lets me actually control things. So you see, hey, my mouse is on that little fader, audio one. Instead, I can just use this little fader and it moves that fader. Really, really cool. It is pretty basic. I can control panning and some other things, but also I have like the solo mute and this record button. That record can be great if I'm like recording voiceover. I pulled in a clip with this recently. So this is a complicated system, but just at a high level, um, I can make sure this automation is on. And if I come to the second option, I can enable fader. And then if I click this little button, that will sort of like prime this for recording that. And then now, 
um, you can see, I can scrub around. And then if I just click play, then uh, the software will be recording any change that happens on that fader. So I will try to do this live. I'm gonna start recording. And then if I move that fader up and then down, you can see it's riding that information as we go. And then I click stop. And then now if I click play and use that fader, it doesn't do anything because now it is reading that movement I made. And I can zoom in and you can see, yeah, it copied that movement as this giant series of keyframes. That's really cool. You could always do that. And this is like a world unto itself. You can do this to record a whole bunch of options. It has all these extra options, like these touch controls, like latch and snap and trim and all these things. But the only other thing I do want to talk about is that you can do this is just at the general level, uh, but you can also control uh, almost any other setting on your audio. In the live stream a few days ago, someone asked about creating like an auto tune effect and there isn't a great solution for, for that, uh, but I came up with one option if you just want like a, a goofy sound effect. On this track, I could add in pitch, uh, just this main like pitch control, and I have, I've recorded this audio of me, especially if I come down to plugins, pitch, semitones, I will click that same option here and just make sure that this plugins option is set in here in these automation controls up here. Then if I click that option, oh, you see now we're recording. Oh, it has these little red underlines here. Helpful. Then now I can just play this. This is a test. Check, 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 check. This is it. <laughs> and then now. This is a test. Check, 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 check. This is it. You got some funky looks. I think I can do better. So I'm gonna click that back, make sure we start equal. This is a test. Check, 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 check. Now you've got some goofy sound effects. The test. Check, 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 check. But I still had to do that process of like clicking record and going back and forth and all of that. And then even like going back, if, if you want to change anything, it can be a little hassle. Now I have all these keyframes in this scene. This is where we come to this brand new feature, uh, vector based keyframes on these automation controls. And just to know uh, if you are on uh, this focus mode, um, you can either uh, drag a certain selection and click like delete to uh, erase any automation to have. Uh, on an entire clip, you can just right click on that and that will select the entire thing. Then you can delete there. Oh, or double click it looks like. Cool. But now, check this out. I've redone all that and it was kind of a hassle to grab that little fader and go back and forth live while we were listening to it over again. But on this uh, drop down where I selected this parameter, we still have this. Oh, I can come back to this effect. Make sure we are at zero, starting there. Test. Check, check. Yeah, yeah. And then back here, I can just click on this line. I'm holding Alt to uh, get this little pop-up of this check bar, but now I can click that and just click through, add a whole bunch of points, and then now drag any of those back and forth. And like, you don't need to do that priming. You don't need to do that recording. Um, this is just like using keyframes here in like a completely, uh, really, really powerful way. So now, this is a test. Check, 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 check. So, hey, you got it. <laughs> and this can be so powerful because you can add these keyframes here for almost anything you can do. You can control your EQ or compression or your overall level uh, just with, like, with a few clicks. And that's really valuable because, you know, there isn't that like keyframe button over here in any of the settings. You do it right on the track. And you can always come back in here, add more points. Like if I wanted this to be a little more stair steppy, then like I could just do that. Again, uh, automation in general is something I've only like really dabbled in the past. I'm sure there's a lot more power here than even I realize. But the last feature we're going to look at, I'm pretty sure this is a new feature. They showed it off in the video. Um, still has to do with automation, but it's going to be, oh, so, so useful. I'm coming back to fader level. And look at this. We set up this um, fader move before. So say I like this complex move by habit, but I just want to change like this one last area here. Now we have a few options. Um, a really cool option <laughs> is this little pencil tool. I can click this, come in here to the end, and instead, uh, say I didn't want this to dip down, I just wanted to like fade down back into the line, then I can just, hey, drag this that way. That's a bad line, but hey, look, it did it. I can undo that and drag back down. Cool. That is actually an incredible feature. I'm pretty sure that's been in there for a little bit, uh, but the setting we are gonna look at, I am going to set keyframes here, there. I'll mute that for now. Just to the end of this out, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna come down to automation active range. I will click that and it goes red. And then now if I click this little button to prime the track, if I come back before that and I start playing, what you will remember, hey, we've primed this. We are uh, supposed to be recording that new automation. But if I play really quick, I have muted this, but if I click play, I'm pulling my little thing here. 
if I'll come back quite a bit. If I play and start moving this fader, you'll see that line is moving, but it's not writing any new keyframes. But if we keep going and uh, we just wait till it gets to that right zone, then as soon as it hits there, we'll be able to write those new keyframes back. And again, after that red zone is done, uh, it doesn't matter, it's not writing anymore, its job is done. And then we stop, and it writes those new keyframes in its place. This is super, super cool. It also has some like uh, punch in features, which is a thing I don't understand because I'm not an audio guy. But this alone, if you have this dynamic automation, especially uh, for stuff like this, and you've done all this work, you've nailed all your timing, um, you've done these complex fader moves, but there is just this one place where you wish you could redo it. You don't wanna have to go through the hassle of nailing all that right the first time. So just set this active zone just for the part you wanna record, and then you can even move that fader, get it in the perfect position and then once it's into that zone you are now recording once it's out you're done Ooh, it's cool yeah this is some pretty uh, relatively niche audio stuff but really really powerful tools that are part of this amazing free uh, it's free software I'm sure there might be a fair number of you who have never even used this automation tool at all and just knowing about this is interesting or exciting in itself um, and then all these new tools on top of that are just you know, everything's new, but this is especially new. Of course, there are even more Fairlight features, but these are the ones that I caught my eye that, you know, I was in a spot to understand. So I hope I've communicated them to you. Um, this is really cool. Uh, I'm probably still going to be spending a whole lot of my time in Fusion doing that, presets and templates and all of that. But for the times, I need to jump into Fairlight, um, especially uh, doing stuff to music, that whole system, really, really cool. This will be a big help. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.